But there's more than just multicam and relinking files and importing layered Photoshop graphics. The whole chroma key, which is stunningly good to begin with, has been improved with some advanced features. Let me give you an example. We have a, a sample here downloaded from Pond5. If I go over to the effects menu, go to keying, you'll see the exact same four settings are still here. By the way, the mask filter has not changed, which is a, a sadness, but the others are really quite good. If we take the key or drag it on top of the clip, without me having to change a setting, we get a key that's that good. It's pretty amazing. But if I select the clip, go to the inspector, and go to the keyer, the top half of the keyer is what we worked with since Final Cut 10 was released. What Apple has done is provide some advanced controls at the bottom of the keyer that I want to call to your attention under color selection. If we look at this piece of video here, let's see, let's look at the source and the event browser. Notice how beautifully lit that background is. It's absolutely flat light, the even green, same color throughout. It's, it's a professionally done background which works great if you're working with professionally done backgrounds, but many of us have to deal with muslin and wrinkles and folds, and we've got a, a real issue with trying to isolate the green. That's where this setting comes in down here at the bottom of the keyer. When you twirl down color selection, this is a color wheel that allows us to refine the green setting. If you want to make the selection wider, grab one of these and drag it open. Our goal in green screen work is to have this angle be as narrow as possible so it selects just the green of the background and nothing else. The more broadly you open it, you're going to be able to key, say, a badly lit background, but you run the risk of having holes due to the talent wearing a similar color or a, a shade of that color in their costume. We can also control saturation. Let's get back down here. See this box right here? If we grab that box, we can change the saturation by clicking on the manual control. Change the saturation by pulling this, and it selects a less saturated the closer it gets to the center, or more saturated the farther it gets from the center. Additionally, not only do we have control over the color selection process, we've also got control over the Luma process. How light or dark are we dealing with? Especially when dealing with folded fabrics, this Luma control is going to be really important. It's going farther down under matte tools, which is also new. We can shrink or expand the matte. That's the edges of the matte. We can soften the edge. We can eat into the edge. Spill suppression is the ability to compensate for green flowing around their hair. But the really hot new item is this called light wrap. Light wrap allows us to take the colors of the background and blend it with the edges of the foreground to make it look like the person in the foreground is actually in the environment of the background. And you adjust the light wrap by grabbing this and dragging to the right. And what we're doing, look at the edges of her hair. We're dialing in some of that purple background into her hair to make it look like she is, in fact, standing in uh, an environment which is essentially purple. You can control the intensity, the opacity, the blend mode, and sometimes changing this from normal to lighten or to screen can make a big difference in how the colors of the background interact with the edges and the colors of the foreground. There are some amazing new control features inside the chroma key setting, and this is just a sample of what's available to us to really refine your keys, especially when dealing with bad lighting or with a poor background.